Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. It is time once again to enter the fifth dimension. And we are getting closer and closer to the 20th anniversary of Kingdom Hearts when it comes to the anniversary and the special event lined up for April 10th. But the anniversary is happening this 28th of March. And of course, I had to get a lot of awesome friends and a lot of cool content creators when it comes to Kingdom Hearts. Everyone, please welcome these amazing people. Let's start off with Sarah Key. How are you doing today? I'm great. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello to you as well. It's always nice to have you here. Oh my goodness. Next up, let's talk to our boy Dean the Machine Sora Alarm One. How are you doing today? I'm doing great today. Good to see you all. It's been a while. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has been a while. I don't want to keep being a while. Listen, I miss you, Dean. I miss <laughs> you. Oh my goodness. And everyone, please welcome my first YouTube friend, the peanut butter to my jelly, Skyward Wing. How are you doing? Oh my god! That was <laughs> that was so sweet. Are you kidding me? I was not ready for that. I'm doing I'm doing yeah, way okay. better now. I, I had a great day, now I'm having an excellent day. Like thank you for that. I'm yeah, but I'm thank you for having me again. Always glad to be on the show. It's always it's always a good time. Always. That's what we try to do here in the fifth dimension. We try to have a good time, we try to kick it. Now if you guys do notice that we do have one member uh missing down below unfortunately uh, jared did want to be here cynical the game is right did want to be here but of course he had uh previous engagements and whatnot and uh he's given us his blessing so we hope to see him again very very soon and hopefully by the time we do see him his eyebrows will grow back and uh the truth is this. <laughs> I, my theory is i think all the spiders that he's fighting on twitter have finally won and they oh, have taken no. him. Like it, it hasn't been Jared for a couple weeks, I think. I think I think the, the New Zealand spiders probably got his ass. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. I don't I don't want to think about that. You know, I, I still have many questions to ask him when it comes to all that, but don't, let's not talk about, about spiders. You know what we could talk about? Kingdom Hearts. We are soon to 20 years of Kingdom Hearts madness, sadness, and happiness, everything in between, as we march on forward to phase two of Kingdom Hearts after the end of Kingdom Hearts Through Remind, after Melody Memory, and after the beginning of Dark Road. Hopefully, we'll get that finale really soon. But I wanted to bring you all here to talk about our favorite memories, what made us love Kingdom Hearts in the first place, and how this journey was 20 years in the making for all of us. So, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the ball over to Sarah Kiev first. Sarah, tell me, let's, let's talk, talk to me about your first experience, how you got into Kingdom Hearts. Okay. Um, I feel like I've probably told you guys this before, but um, so for me, uh, my neighbor who lived down the street had the game and he was actually my sister's friend. So they were older than me, like three years older than me. Um, I was like eight and uh, he brought the game over and he was telling us, he was like kind of nerding out. He's like, you guys have to see the graphics in this game, like at the end. And um, so he brought it over, he put it on, and he played the whole ending part. So like the final rest to the end. Wow, so my first okay. experience, <laughs> so my first experience with Kingdom Hearts was literally the end of the game. But I fell in love with it. I had never felt like so moved in my whole life. And I became <laughs> obsessed. And then my parents got the game for me. And then I just played it all the time. So yeah, that was my first experience with Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> that, that, that's so pure. That's so amazing. Oh my goodness. Thank <laughs> you so much for sharing. But now we're going to throw it over to Dean. Dean, the machine. Tell me how your first experience with Kingdom Hearts was. I remember oh, those yeah. photos. I remember those photos. <laughs> I remember the pictures. Whoa, the, the photos are at least two years after, at least. <laughs> Still. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably a few people know this story, but I was at some kind of family gathering in the fall. I want to say maybe even Thanksgiving 2002. My cousin is a bit older than me, and he wanted to show the whole family this game that he bought. 
And, you know, he does this. He did this routinely back in the day. It was pretty normal. So we all went up to his room and watched him start Kingdom Hearts. So I got to watch him play Destiny Islands. And uh, it was pretty late in the night. It was, of course, after dinner time. So I only got to watch him play Destiny Islands, actually. And I was so in love with the game. I thought Destiny Islands was the only world in the game. And I just thought it was about Sora, Riku, and Kairi. And that's it. I actually didn't even know it was a Disney game. And uh, when I went home, I never begged my parents so hard for a game <laughs> in my life. And when they finally bought it for me, that's when I found out about the Disney worlds and everything else. And it was just my favorite thing ever. <laughs> that was my first time. That's so that's so pure. And I still remember the picture. I want to ask you this. I, 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 I never want to. I never asked you, but I always saw the picture. Where did that Keyblade come from? That Keyblade, the <laughs> the one okay, where so it was like you as a kid holding the Keyblade yeah. to the Sora pose. Where did that Keyblade come from? Um, so that Keyblade, I want to say maybe two thousand five or two thousand four. I f was finally able to convince my parents online to go to eBay and buy me a wooden Keyblade. Someone made it at home and That's painted crazy. it. That's crazy in two thousand five. Yeah, Dang. and I had it shipped to my house. The Keyblade was almost bigger than me. It was pretty <laughs> heavy for me, but oh my god, I loved it. I had that photo shoot, and somehow those pictures are still circling online today. Of course, because so. like they're that's, like, like, the that's best iconic. Pictures, bro. What? <laughs> they are good pictures. All right, Sky, you know what's coming to tell us how you got into Kingdom. Um, it was actually Utada. She did it. One of the commercials for Chain of Memories was wild, and it had uh, Simple and Clean. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the remix. It was like the OG Simple and Clean. Yeah. And the I soul was one's kid. like, when you yeah. walk out. Yeah. Grab me by the soul. I didn't know. I was like, oh, my God, what is this? What is that? Like, I remember turning to the, what the hell is that? It was just, it was angelic, really. And I was like, oh, my God, it's so beautiful. And I bought the game thinking the song was in it, which it's not. I mean, it's not, not. Oh yeah, the remix is in it. <laughs> well, no, I, no, 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 no. The ending, the ending version is. I never. All right, version. I never, I never beat the game <laughs> when I was a kid. I never. I got to Riku four, and that was it. I was gated. Okay, forever. all right, that, 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 that's fine. All right. As I a child, I, I understand. Riku, I yeah. Riku I four, hard. I understand. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a boy, and no, that. But yeah, I played the game all the time. I had it on my SP. And I would alternate because I had a Game Boy Advance player, like the, the add-on to the GameCube, which yeah. was so cool. But yeah, it was so good. But nah. yeah, I, I, Chain of Memories is the one for me. That's And you taught nice. it. That song just stuck with me. Amazing. Now, of course, I, I have to tell my side of the story when it comes to how I got into Kingdom Hearts. And I tell the story every, every now and again. And it leads into something that everyone here was able to like see me experience and bring forth is that way back in the day i always had this kind of rivalry with my friends because we always liked video games and whatnot and i was always a nintendo kid within our group and then my best friend was always the sony kid the playstation kid right and then he was telling me he's like yo you need to come to my house and play this one game and like game what's it called kingdom hearts i'm like oh that sounds cool what's it about and then he told me he's like yo it's final fantasy mixed with disney and i tell the story every now and again when he first told me that that sounds stupid Right? And I'm like, that sounds like the dumbest thing ever. I came to his house and it was over. He showed me the majesty of Kingdom Hearts and it was so crazy. I'm like, I like I came to his house every day. I had my own file. I played Kingdom Hearts to completion at his house. I got him Kingdom Hearts 2 for his birthday. And then you guys met him at the anniversary event because the man, my best friend, who got me into Kingdom Hearts, thanks to Square Enix, I was actually able to bring him to the Kingdom Hearts 3 premiere. I'm like, this I is know. the guy who this is the guy who brought got me into Kingdom Hearts. I had to bring him. This is this is it. Right? And that's how I got into Kingdom Hearts. And like it, it was it was magic. But I'm like, I can't believe a series that's able to mix two polarizing aspects when it comes to Western and Japanese like American and Japanese media into one beautiful product. And that is just, you know, it's crazy that we've gone so far, 20 years, guys. Like, Kingdom Hearts is amazing. Now, 
going through memory lane because this is the like main focus of the fifth dimension i'm gonna throw this over to dean for first times uh dean tell me about your favorite kingdom hearts character of course you can say sora but of course after sora we're gonna have to have a conversation about anyone after sora and tell me about <laughs> why that character resonates with you so much uh, let's get it oh my god you're, you're zora along one <laughs> I am so happy to go first. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about Sora a little bit. Sora is that character that changed my life. Sora is that character that I embarrassingly would go to barber shops at seven years old and show them a picture of his hair and ask them if they could do that for me. Oh my God. <laughs> like a GTA situation. Wow. Yeah. No you I, was like, I was like, can you make me this? And they That's never amazing. could. That's amazing. That's <laughs> amazing. But I've, I've tried it. Um, I just love how he started as uh, this naive child, sort of chosen by the Keyblade. At least we were led to believe at the beginning of the series. And uh, he he always can find find the good in everything, which I always I always try to take a piece of that with me wherever I go. And um, it's just his smile, his smile. We saw it like <laughs> it's so cheesy, but the way that he will like be cheesing all the time, it really it really brings a light to the room. And like in the series, he's the one that pretty much connects everyone, and that's always a good role model for me. And just inspires me every day i love sora always have always will now let, 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 like you don't have to get, go into massive detail but other than sora who's your favorite kingdom hearts character if you had to choose someone other than sora or, or at least second favorite mm. you know these days is this cheating <laughs> these days i might have to say roxas Roxas has gone up for cheating. me, actually. He, he, Good. He's leveled up big time. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. I, I would normally say Riku, but I think I've just been really enjoying Roxas lately. And that guy is just super cool. So I, I would say Roxas. Roxas is so cool. Roxas alum won one. Win. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. So now I'm going to throw the ball over to Sarah. And uh, who's your favorite Kingdom Hearts character? And if it's Sora, that's fine. But if it is Sora, then we're going to have to choose another one after Sora. But tell me about why these characters resonate with you when it comes to Kingdom Hearts. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a really similar answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sora is my favorite character. Uh, when I was younger, um, this is so embarrassing. But, like, I used to... Nothing's uh, embarrassing here. I, I know, it kind of is. I used to call myself, like... <laughs> the female Sora. <laughs> and, um, because we have, like, the same hair color and stuff. But, I, <laughs> that, um, so, and also... That, that's that's understandable. Okay. Yeah, right, right? And I always like to, like, find the light in darkness, you know, that kind of thing. I always thought that that was really inspiring. Um, and it, the whole female Sora thing was taken pretty far, though, because I found this picture online of somebody did like a fan art of a female Sora and <laughs> I would like use it as my avatar on like any website. Um, like I used to go on like Kingdom Hearts forums and stuff, but even like other forums, I would use it all the time. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just always like uh, the, the way that Sora is, like his friends are his power. And I even quoted him in, as my like senior quote in high school. <laughs> oh say, wait, say it now, say it now, now. Oh, okay. The heart may be weak, and sometimes it may even give in. But I've learned that deep down, there's a light that never goes out. That's fantastic. Perfect. They didn't even give me your book quotes, <laughs> man. Our yeah, no, they so didn't fun. give me one either. I'm like, bro, <laughs> what so the hell? Like, Yo, I would, I, I would have just like. All right, continue, sir. I'm making myself cringe. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. What? But yeah, oh, uh, you, I are, love... you look. It was, you you are cringe, but you are. I, free. But I'm free. Yes, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> we are all free. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess Sora is my favorite. Um, but you said I have to pick another one too. I only really like Sora nominate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tell us about that. I, 
Let's go, finally! <laughs> love! She's my favorite. But like, uh, Yeah, Naminé is awesome. I don't know, I just feel like uh, she's very important to the series, like with the whole memory thing, and uh, I like the mystery behind all of it. I think she's just a really cool character, and I was so excited at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, but I really want to see more of her in the future, because, I, and I love her drawings, and yeah. I just, I just really like her. <laughs> I feel that Nomine is a really underrated character, and I, I love Nomine as well. But when it comes to all the, his, this might get me in like a lot of trouble. When it comes to all the, I would say, Kari offshoots, when it comes to Kari, Nomine, Shion, Nomine has to be like at the bottom, but that's not taking anything away from Nomine because I, I love Shion, I love Kari. And like for me, it's like it's Shion, Kari, then Nomine. But no, nah, I love them all. I love them all. Nomine is great. Oh my lord. But thank you so much for sharing. That's that's really enlightening. And now we come to the boy. All right, Skyward. I'm just, I, I just going to I'll leave off that because like, I love Nomine. She's my favorite. She's always chefing behind the scenes. Like she's Wait, she's never she's period? never. Yeah, she's like always. Oh, that's your always, that's your favorite character. Nominate. She No, I'm dead serious. She's always. Oh, let's go. All scenes. right. <laughs> like I want you to know she's probably like the only character who has like connections with like everybody in some way, shape or form. Like how how. Nominate ended up getting the terror, like you know the loop de loop stuff. She yeah. just does these things, and she's been doing that like from from Chain of Memories two three. Like she's nonstop and underappreciated. So like I and I've also been playing a mod that has her like replace Sora, and mm -hmm. it's it yeah. giving me life. And I don't want to see her ever like you know throw hands. I'm never like give her a keyblade, but I I like that she has been useful regardless of her lack of physical prowess, and that is fantastic to me. That's uh, plus I, feel, I love her design. She's adorable. She's just a little gumdrop. But I feel no, Nominate deserves a Keyblade. And if I don't know if you guys ever seen the fan made, uh, like I would say like fighting exhibition anthology known as Dead Fantasy. Have mm. you guys ever seen that? Oh my god, yeah. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of the coolest things. Yeah, and Nominate is is a fighter in that. So if if you guys don't know, Dead Fantasy is like. A uh, combination of a fan-made uh, like fighter series that combines Dead or Alive and Final Fantasy, and then there's one fight in which Kairi actually transforms into Nomine, and then Nomine they gave Nomine her own special type of Keyblade, and she fights. And I'm like, that's really, really, really cool. And it's like been really popular, but it's old. It's like super old. Like, like I think it was like 2000, 2007, 8, 9, like around that time. And mm -hmm. I always thought that was like really, really neat. And they gave Nominee a Keyblade. I'm like, yo, Nominee, I feel, deserves a Keyblade. And, oh, uh, man. Did she end up getting her own? Because I remember in that, Kyrie had Oathkeeper. Yeah. Was that? Oh, no, so Ky Kyrie had Destiny's Embrace. Like, in, in, in Death Fantasy, she had Oathkeeper, and then she got this, yeah. like, weird, like, snow-looking Keyblade. It looked really neat. Um, okay. But I think Nominee does deserve a Keyblade, and Oathkeeper would be a really cool Keyblade. Uh, because, um, you know, that, that's nominate star charm would be really, would be a really nice way to like give that to Oathkeeper. Like Kyrie has Destiny's Embrace, uh, nominate has Oathkeeper, yada, yada, yada. But, uh, yeah, uh, when it comes to my favorite character, you guys already know it has been, it always will be Roxas. I always thought Roxas was the coolest guy. I love Sora, right? But Roxas took like everything about Sora and beyond Sora to a next level in my opinion. Like, he was so cool with the dueling Keyblades. He was a lot more emotional than Sora. Sora has like a wide range of emotions, but he's mostly positive and always cheerful, right? But Roxas had the capacity to get mad, furious, sad, and you know, even would fall into the aspects of revenge. Like, Sora, when it comes to Sora, revenge is never on his mind. Even when it comes to like people like Xehanort or like anyone else that has done him in, in the most dirtiest of ways. Rox is like, yo, you do me wrong, I am coming out for you. Sora's never like that. It's just like, you know, yo, you did me dirty, but... Bygones be bygones. Yeah, bygones be bygones. <laughs> but Ro but wait, Rox is wait. like, nah. You cross me. You, ca you cross yeah. me or my friends? It's over. And it's I saw a sight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel that's like an, like that, that's a, a version of loyalty that, you know, Rox has that Sora doesn't. And Sora, obviously, Sora is extremely loyal, but, like, Roxas takes loyal to an, another level, a different level. I don't want to say another level because, I mean, like, I, I never want Sora to dip into the idea of revenge because that will betray his character. But when it comes to Roxas, it's throttling time. And that, and I feel that capacity to go beyond, I would say, the barriers that inhibit Sora's character is why I like Roxas 
as my favorite character, right? So that that that's just me. Now going forth with uh, the future from the past of Kingdom Hearts, I want to ask all of you: What's something that you really want to see explored that wasn't explained so far in Kingdom Hearts? That is, you know, we we know of. It could either be you know the origin of the Keyblade, where is Subject X? Uh, where would the characters like Roxas, Ventus, everyone who isn't really part of like the main, like I would say, um, one track focus, like because we know where Riku's going, we know Riku's going to Quadratum, we know Kyrie is going off to uh, train with Master Aqua. Is there any other unexplained aspect or uh, unexplored aspect that you've seen in the past of Kingdom Hearts that you would love to see explored in the future of Phase Two? Let's go ahead and start with Sky this time. That was a lot. I mean, like I as you for, don't, have to, don't have to think about it much. Just, just, just first thing in your mind, go. I say I think about if I really want to see anything moving forward. It's um, I guess more of Sora having complex relationships because like I always think about how they handled it with Dream Drop. Like he was kind of one noted, kind of super naive. Three, they handled it a little better. But I miss like in Chain of Memories where he would get angry. He had the capacity to do that. Um, so. For me as a character, I want to see him go through all of it, go through the motions, and we don't really see that narratively. I like that he's cheerful, but maybe that's a character arc for him that he's like, "Whoa, what's happening with this?" Or that. Right? Consequence. You want you want mm -hmm. him to feel like like, "Yo, I can't be going through the motions like I've been done." And I feel that's something that they they addressed that a little bit in Kingdom Hearts three when it comes mm -hmm. to like you know everyone dying in his face and like, "Yo, actions have consequences," but. Like, Sora was the type of person that's like, okay, I don't care. I want to save Kairi because Kairi, like, you know, we all saw that. Can we, like, all right, that's a little, like, you know, tangent. But can we talk about that for a small second? Yo, when I saw Kairi die for the first time, I'm like, yo, there ain't no way. I There's no way I just saw Kairi die right in front of me. I want to I, I wanna ask y'all, let, let's start with Sarah for that. I want to ask y'all, how did y'all feel when that happened in real time when you were playing the game? All right, Sarah, tell me about it. I felt sad, but I also kind of, for some reason, was very confident that she would be okay. Because I feel like in Kingdom right. Hearts, like, I, I feel like <laughs> I wouldn't have been so abrupt like that. If she actually was going to die, it would have been a lot more, like, drawn out, more emotional. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it was just kind of mm -hmm. just like... <laughs> yeah, it, it just happened, and yeah. I'm like... Yeah, it's hard to process. Like, so, yeah. Definitely, definitely. All right. So, uh, Dean, how do you feel about that? We're going to get back to the actual subject, but I just wanted to play off this tangent a little bit. Dean. <laughs> uh, okay, sure. Yeah. Um, I saw that, and my heart was definitely beating. I feel like it put me into the, like, it, it did me a favor in terms of really immersing me even more into that final act than I already was so I feel like I feel like that was a really good thing but very similarly to Sarah I do kind of think about things like how did they write this and how are they presenting this so I was kind of thinking that she will probably be all right and Kingdom Hearts just as a whole has a tendency to have a lot of characters be all right in the end so while I did feel sort of secure in the fact that she was going to be okay it really did help bring me into the story even more so i did appreciate that and it was it was a cool moment right all right what about you sky yeah i'm, I'm just gonna tldr a lot what they said about i was just like that's she's gonna be fine my thing was how he felt immediately after that where he was like you see the boy cry and i'm like oh like there's very few times you see him crying and like the voice cracks like Haley Joel Osment in those scenes like that. <laughs> he has like a, yeah. has a very specific delivery of how he says Kyrie in that one I'm like oh shit Kyrie like like yeah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. When, I was gonna say when she uncomforted him that was like mm -hmm. oh yeah that was a that was such a beautiful scene because like everyone was getting ready but then she on she on just she on just walked up and he's like yo it's gonna be okay and I'm like <laughs> That was good. I needed I needed that interaction. But for for me, when I saw Kari die at first, because like in the contrast to all of y'all saying, like, you know, oh, she's gonna be alright. Yo, that was the last thing on my mind because you know, in Kingdom Hearts, 
we always see like characters get dispatched or eliminated like after the fact like the battle happens like let, let's let's take chain of memories for an example when Larxen or Marluxia or Lex no okay Lexarius is an, an exception when Larxen is dispatched like you, the battle's over and she's like uh and she starts fading away she's like ah and I'm like okay like okay she kind of died but at the same time Kingdom Hearts does have the capacity to be grisly when it comes to dispatching certain characters. Like when Riku Replica killed Zexion, when Axel killed Vexen, when Dar when uh, Riku killed Lexeus, and I'm like, okay. But I didn't really feel bad for those characters because I'm like, okay, like, you know, they're bad guys, you know, murk them, right? Kyrie didn't get the after the fact death. Kyrie didn't get like a beam death or anything like that. Xehanort straight up just like sliced and diced her. And I'm like, Yo, that didn't just happen. And, and you know, crazy enough, if you look back, she died the same way Shion did. And I'm like, okay, no, nah, that's not okay. That's not okay. Like, where they both turned to crystals and just, like, poofed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that that's not fine. And then, of course, you know, when it comes to Kingdom Hearts, it does have the capacity to bring people back. But at the same time, you know, Sora did have to pay a hefty price in order to bring Kairi back. And that's the predicament we are in now. And, you know, people do die in Kingdom Hearts. Ericus, Xehanort... Uh, they're dead and um, other examples you know they're far they're they're few and in between but they it still happens so like mm -hmm. I just wanted to go off that tangent when it comes to like you know Kyrie's own death and you know Sora's own reversal of the death because it's not like Sora brought her back like all willy-nilly he had to go through a lot to bring her back now mm -hmm. uh, going off what Sky said when it comes to you know Sora's own understanding of consequence that's like the one tangent I want to go off because you know Sora always did things willy-nilly Sora always did things with the idea that like oh everything will be okay everything will be okay everything will be okay but then Kingdom Hearts 3 I felt really showed that side where like hey listen if you're not careful things will not be okay right and if and even if you're able to make things okay they're not gonna be okay for everybody especially you and we saw Sora, you know, learn that the hard way. And that's mm -hmm. what all what all of Phase 2 is about. But going off when it comes to, you know, ideas or avenues or previous experiences that have yet to be explored in certain ways, what do you guys want to see explored in massive ways? We had Sky answer that. So we're going to throw it over to Dean now. Yeah, sure. Um, I... I wouldn't say that it's something that's never been explored because it was kind of the first thing we learned. Uh, I think it's this this concept of the Destiny trio. They were portrayed to be very close at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 1. Uh, friends who wanted to build a raft together, go visit new worlds. They were like the tight-knit group. Um, you know, we see little interactions here and there. But I felt like after, coming out of Kingdom Hearts 3, we didn't really get much in terms of them uh i feel sora is very close to riku and sora is pretty close to kairi but uh kairi and riku kind of didn't interact that much in kingdom maybe at all in kingdom hearts 3 until you know maybe a tiny bit more in melody of memory so i'd really like to see just that trio become a real thing again and be able to unite and and just explore more interactions with them because I want to I want to feel very deeply that like they're friends they're these friends from like Kingdom Hearts one that we were introduced to, right? And you know it's interesting now that you say that and like making me remember like you know all the annals of history when it comes to Kingdom Hearts characters and whatnot. You know I felt that wasn't really explored up until now because like it was the, it was always the underlying aspect that they grew up together. You know, they met when they were like, you know, four, five, six years old and they had 10 years of friendship growing up between each other. And then that was something that I felt was like, you know, supposedly relate to us from Kingdom Hearts 1, but we never really saw it. We got some ideas of that from Chain of Memories, which was amazing. Like, remember the story where uh, Naminé was like, apparently in their memory that, oh, there's this one girl we used to hang out with. And then she went away. I'm sure the grown-ups knew, but we were never we we never knew it. And then it's like Sora started to cry, and Riku wanted to calm him down. That was such a really beautiful avenue they explored for a little bit mm -hmm. in Chain of Memories. And I'm like, yo, keep doing that. But they didn't. And I, I definitely get what you see. So I would love to see more and more backstory to the context of the relationship between Sora, Riku, and Kairi, of them being kids up until you know how we start seeing them in Kingdom Hearts One. I would love to see that. It's like, hey, you remember 
when we were kids and we did this or we did that or whatever and whatnot. And that would be a good way to, let's say, if Sora were to go down any type of avenue of despair being in Quadrata, you know, Riku and possibly Kairi, if she ever makes it there, would use these stories to remind Sora of the cheerfulness they once shared together and give more context to the relationship of them growing up. Oh, Dean, stop me. I need to, I need to, that, that's something I would definitely <laughs> like to see in, in the future of Kinross. Definitely, definitely. But thank you so much for sharing. Uh, when it comes to those aspects or any type of experiences or avenues or encounters that you like to see explored that, that you felt wasn't explored enough in the past of Kingdom Hearts, Sarah, tell me about what you would like to see in the future. I have the ultimate mystery that needs to be solved. Is Sora's mom still waiting for him to come to dinner? <laughs> the real questions. The real questions we've been asking for years. It's, it's been 20 years. It's about goddamn time someone said something. What did she make? Maybe he ran away because she didn't. he didn't want to eat it? I think about this all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then Sora never mentions his mother again. It's irrelevant. What? No, 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 no. That come that brings me to my my serious like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm I'm actually serious about this. I it kind of goes hand in hand with what Sora said. It's a, it's like it's like okay, okay, okay. So right. So we need more background like information. Like we need. Like, to see maybe Sora's parents, or like... Because when we went to Destiny Islands in Kingdom Hearts 3, I felt so, like, disappointed that we're, we're at Destiny Islands, and, like, we don't really do anything there. Like, I would have liked to see Sora kind of, like, interact with the his hometown a little bit more. So I would really like to see, like, more of that, I guess. But... Yeah, I know, I get that. We know way more about, let's say, like... Hollow Bastion or Land of Departure or these other worlds that we do about Destiny Islands. We got we got where the kids hang and maybe where they go to school and like five NPCs that are from Final Fantasy. So <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's just... You know, I, I definitely get where you guys are coming from, but for me, I felt like that that was the whole point. Cause like they're trying to leave their islands. Why is everyone in their why is everyone in the communities like trying to go back? They're trying because to they're trying the to go back too. That's their whole no, point of the game. No. They're like, we gotta go get Riku and go home. We gotta <laughs> find Kyrie and go home. Nah, <laughs> they nah. want to go home too. They don't want to go home. <laughs> they want to keep exploring. They want to keep seeking the darkness. Man. But then, like, but at the end of <laughs> Kingdom Hearts three, everyone's on the beach except for Sora. Like, they're all there. Like, I mean, I don't know. I just. It was really sad, yeah. Everyone having a good time, and, and Sora yeah. was there for like a second, and then yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that's really sad. It was really. There's was no actually... way. I, did that play out in real time? I still to this day think it was just an interpretation. There's no way no. that happened in real time. It happened in real time. Everyone's There's like, no, like, no, 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 it no. happened. It happened. That's why they got all rattled because everyone's having a good time, and then like. Yo, like, Riku's like, yo, look, the homie's back. He, he, he did it. He brought back Kari. And then they didn't really approach him because, like, you know, they were having a moment. And then they saw him despair. And they're like, yo, what the fuck? Like, but we don't we don't see the what the fuck. The credits roll. Of course. So how, do I, how do we know? Yo, imagine the trauma. That would be uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 would be goaded ending. If you see literally the entire crowd, just everybody like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> the greatest. Dude. That would be everybody. That would and then I want you for a lifetime. Oh my god, I would that would be the greatest. That was game literally ever. the sun setting because the sun was <laughs> setting. Like that would be goading. Just oh my god. But that would, mm. so yeah, that's what I'm, I, I don't know. I think it's an artistic interpretation of I don't know. I don't either know. way, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I always thought of it as like there's no way they watched him die like that and did not no, no, no. Just... To me, to me, like they did. And I thought that was like the perfect ending to King Wars 3. People hate it, but I'm like, you know, like be a hater, I don't care. Like, I always said that Kingdom Hearts 3 needs to end with a new problem in order to, like, ring in the new saga. And, man, what a problem that is! Like, ugh. I was like, alright, now we gotta go hey. find Sora, man. Right? Like, Sora, Sora had to pay the price, you know? Ka Ka Kairi had to be saved, and that's what happened. Like, yeah, it can't happen. always be a happy ending, like... Yeah. I guess, like, a lot of people, like, um, they looked at Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2 was, like, a super happy ending. 
and if we were like, yeah, that was a happy ending, and I'm like, yeah, get, I hope you ain't getting used to it too much, man. Like, just Kingdom Hearts 3, oof. I was I was ready for sadness. And you know what's the craziest thing about that? Namor warned us. Remember when he made that interview like years ago before Kingdom Hearts 3 came out? And he's like, oh, the ending for Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be difficult to accept. And he warned us and then y'all didn't y'all didn't y'all didn't keep that warning in mind and i'm like i, I was I think, ready i think those are i think you, these are two different things you talk about i think one you talk about how the ending actually like how it ended and how people interpreted it but mm. this is i i understood the ending it's not that i i didn't like it i just thought it was kind of poorly done i just was like oh like i would yeah. like to see the groups react. Like i i get why the ending happened i get why they did that but i'm just like i could have been done a little better it, and then you know the they kind is, of remedied it in my mind but um it's it's not um, like and it, it's not like it needed to be clarified in my mind because like like Sora was warned multiple times in kingdom Hearts 3 especially towards the end that shit was gonna happen if he kept going but down that's mad path. vague that's mad vague it's Shit's not gonna mad happen. vague like literally like you said dedicated, what, what, they dedicated a whole cutscene with young xehanort in san francisco san francisco is like yo you, they dedicated one cut price in, in this and, no, 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 in, in no, 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 the kingdom no, no, no. hearts no, it thousand, wasn't. Even, it wasn't. It, no, it wasn't in one cutscene. It was also when Young Xehanort got dispatched. When he's mm. like, "Yo, you about to you about to pay the ultimate price, Lair Sora. Your time in this world is boof." Like I and said, I think they the fixed. Wind. They did it a lot better when Remind came out because we got to know where that went. So I think it's better for that. Because like, okay. that, that they had to do that, that they... in order to set up Remind. Right. They but had yeah. We, that, like, yeah. At the time, at the time, there was there was a long time gap between when Kingdom Hearts 3 <laughs> Remind came out. And it was just, hey. oh my god. <laughs> Yo, I, I, it's I, more impactful though. Yeah. The one thing we had holding us down was critical critical mode. Uh, no, nah, like, like I'm, I'm glad old. Remind came out like a year after Kingdom Hearts 3. Because like, 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 like Sarah said, like that helped like fester and it was like a lot more impactful when the time came and you we, remember we were all electric when you know remind season came around you know we got the new keyblades we got the new abilities you know dean over here was all like yo flash <laughs> <that!"> <laughs> happiest days ever oh man that's crazy that we actually didn't get flashed up until like you know uh remind came out but like that's as well now that's one thing i uh that's the next thing i want to ask you guys when it comes to the future of kingdom hearts you know we've been talking a lot about the lore the experiences the characters the stories our own uh, ideals when it comes to like all of that but when it comes to you know uh, uh moving forward with games mechanically and whatnot i feel that it's a common sentiment that you know a lot of people want to compare and contrast uh the efforts made by the tokyo team the kyoto team and, and the osaka team when it comes to you know producing kingdom hearts games and I feel that it was a main consensus that thanks to Remind, a lot of people start believing in the prowess that the Osaka team could put out really good products to those that loved Kingdom Hearts 2 or any other game that they put out beforehand and whatnot. And I want to ask you guys that perspective when it comes to making games moving forward, especially since we know that multiple titles are being in development, uh, more likely by the Osaka team. So let's go ahead and start with, you know, the machine, Dean. Tell me about that. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I had high hopes for Kingdom Hearts 3 pre-release. Uh, when I did play it, I did enjoy the game. I did like it. I still went back and fought Dark Inferno every week just for some reason. But, you know, deep <laughs> down in my heart, I was just like kind of really sad because I, I did at the same time feel like this wasn't living up to the expectations, at least mechanically, uh, that I would have liked to see in the series. Now, all the ideas they had were very, very good and were moving forward, but I felt the execution, sometimes it would be like hard to, the cancel windows wouldn't be as friendly. There were no like mid-range combo modifiers, so you were kind of relying on the on the uh, air step, even, yeah, even for enemies that aren't that far yeah magic flash is the ugliest slowest finisher i've ever seen in my life <laughs> that kind of stuff wait, wait, i mean <laughs> I, I will say this magic flash looks cool but i definitely get what people are saying like yo magic flash i'm like yeah magic flash hey I'll smash say, is, I'm, I'm very smash happy to good. do it in smash i'm very happy like, yeah. to do it in smash yeah <laughs> and then uh, from like explosion like explosion had 
no matter what weight class the heartless or nobody uh, was doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, like all directions that was the most fire finisher of all time yeah oh and God. then they brought in explosion in second form and Sora's hitting them with pillows like <laughs> <laughs> But then, so like I kind of accepted, like okay, maybe this is the new normal, you know, a little, a little sad in my heart for over a year, and then Remind came out, and I was like, uh, someone DM'd me, and they were like, Dean, Remind, the abilities might be better than Two FM. I read that DM before I got on. I was like, <laughs> that sounds gay. Yo, 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 ain't no <laughs> way, ain't no way. <laughs> and then I got on, and you know, Flash Step, the cancel windows, Dark Form, Light Form. Double form. Double form is the best form I've ever used in any Kingdom Hearts game. Peak boss design, and, peak and, combat. And, and Dean, guess guess what guess what du double form is based on? <clears throat> Roxas. Oh, Roxas? Yeah, yeah, but it's Sora's now, so it's okay. It's better now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I now that they did that, it's like as long as they kind of hone in on this new direction. And stick with it. Maybe, you know, have the next game be something like that for a base. Even in just, like, feel. Maybe not difficulty. I'll be so happy. I, I will be satisfied. And if Square... If this team, you know, they're finally making everything, like, mechanically peak again. If you move them somewhere else to Final Fantasy again and start over with a new team, <laughs> I'm coming after you, Square. I'm coming after you. Don't do it again. That, that was, yo, yo, buy that ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a ticket, head over to Osaka, go visit some deer while you wait for your appointment, and then yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness, God. but I definitely, I definitely get that, and I definitely got all those sentiments, especially when it comes to like you know everything that was added to the Remind uh, DLC, even though it was like you know the free combo modifiers and stuff, and yo like Last Charge, that uh, that move was just so good. I that, love that it. was like, and that's oh, a, another question I want to ask all after I get. You know everyone else's perspective so we're gonna dial back to that but now i'm gonna throw the ball over to sarah when it comes to you know carrying hearts moving forward with the specific teams osaka specifically uh mechanically kingdom hearts you got confidence where do you want to see him you know explore avenues how do you feel about you know possibly kingdom hearts 4 anything in between when it comes to after playing the remind dlc let's hear your thoughts okay um whenever kingdom hearts 3 first came out I did really enjoy the combat. I didn't have too many issues with it. I mean, I definitely, I, I think that if, it kind of goes back to that like saying though, like if it's broken, like don't fix it. Like getting rid of things is unnecessary. Like right. I understand adding like uh, new things and making Kingdom Hearts 3 combat different and more flashy and all of those things. Like I, I understand that, but I think like, taking some of the abilities away that were in Kingdom Hearts 2 was unnecessary. And, like, well, I even feel that way with Kingdom Hearts 2. Whenever, like, vanilla Kingdom Hearts 2, when they took Yo, away dodge no roll. no dodge roll? Why? Right. Why? There's no need for that. <laughs> so I'm really glad that with uh, Remind, they added um, some of those old abilities back and made the combat just phenomenal. I think going forward, though, I I actually think Keyblade transformations have way more potential than Drive Forms, just because of the vast amount that you could have. But I do think vary them more, because some of them are just like reskins of each other. Like you know what yeah. I mean? I think uh, if we could just like make the Keyblade transformations as cool as like the like Oblivion and Oathkeeper double form, like if we could do that like and make everything like that cool or like Ultima mm -hmm. Ultimate form is like amazing. Um, then I'll be very happy because yeah, I, I really liked Limit Cut and Remind. So it was super dope, and I, I definitely get those uh, sentiments when it comes to you know form changes being superior to that of Drive Forms. A lot of people like to argue that because you know uh, when it comes to Kingdom Hearts Two Final Mix, a lot of people thought Drive Forms were a lot more. Uh, it had a lot more utility because they were like I would say much more of a controlled uh variable instead of you know relying on situation commands in aura to proc uh form changes and whatnot uh before changes have a lot more like i would say uh, an erratic nature to them but i feel it's a lot more fun in that aspect and you can control them to a fault especially set, uh stacking them thanks to kid Marsuya allowing you to have multiple keyblades in tow so that allowed you to like you know string better combos but like how dean said before you know the uh council windows and even the the form change swap windows 
could leave a lot to be desired because, you know, at first when I heard about form changes and how you could stock three Keyblades together, I'm like, okay, let's get some Devil May Cry aspect into this where we could swap them like back and forth fast and stuff, but there was always a cooldown timer between sw swapping doing Keyblades and then in turn forms. Uh, mm. If they were to like eliminate that cooldown, possibly in Kingdom Hearts 4 or anything, you know, beyond that of three where they want to explore similar avenues. I felt, I feel that that's going to be the ticket to win it like hard. Mm -hmm. And that's my perspective when it comes to like form changes and you know, drive forms in Kingdom Hearts 3 or even that of beyond. Uh, but let's throw the question over to, wait, I already got your perspective, Sky, or did I not? When it comes to, okay, all right, all right, there. Yeah. I was going to say, I just had the wildest thought and I think history is going to repeat itself in a way that it's going to go crazy because the thing you said about the Osaka team. So moving forward, everyone's talking about Kingdom Hearts 4. Everyone's talking <laughs> about the main, the big game. But no one's talking about the little not Melody of Memory game. No one's talking about like, what, what, how is that, you know, Scala Ed Kylum game going to play? Is it going to be a small scale? It's going to be a Disney is Plus series. Get... Right. So, you know what I'm saying? See, if that's cool, I'd be down with that, please. I'd be cool. But like, what is that game going to look like or be like because everyone's talking about like is it gonna look like kingdom hearts 3 and kingdom shader is it gonna have you know what the dream dropper birth by sleep of this next era what is that about to be no one's talking about that because that's a probably have story or something crazy because i really doubt that we're gonna jump right into four or if we are they're not gonna jump right into five eventually we're getting that oh yeah oh yeah, yeah yeah you know so what what the hell is that what is that what is that like what can so, what in this day and age doesn't make those other games seem obsolete? You know what okay, I'm saying? Because like so we Sky, had those games are on handhelds, right? Like they were they were they were you know smaller games. So how does that look in a new era of Kingdom Hearts where they're all could be on one platform? They could all could be on every platform. Like how do you make a game a Kingdom Hearts game feel significant? You know when it's next to three on the yeah. same you know what i'm saying like, how all right do so I, how do try trying to answer that question let me hear your perspective what what do you think could be something like that that can like you know change it up and not be four you know i don't know or between that i, I i'm just not i'm not saying really change it i'm saying how they're gonna handle like the uh how are they gonna present these games how how like what if what if osaka team now they're the, that they're the tokyo what if there's a new gen osaka team the smaller kingdom hearts teams that work on these smaller titles like these you know we have a new that's what i'm talking about history is about to probably repeat itself because we if osaka is working on four then who's working on these other games we about to yeah see. look so. as as long as it's not a phone game i'm fine yeah. i don't care <laughs> <laughs> and uh the thing is like if there is a new team and they're running into maybe like issues or just like getting used to the design of kingdom hearts it's totally cool because we know the Osaka team is there to help them and the Osaka team is there to make Kingdom Hearts 4. They're not going to pass Kingdom Hearts 4 to the smaller team, whereas with like Kingdom Hearts 3, we knew Osaka team was going to be the new big team. So that's why it was kind of crucial to keep an eye on them. But I feel like with Osaka team having the smaller teams back, it's okay for them to experience, experiment. It's okay for them to do things differently. As long as, you know, the Osaka team is always there to continue what they did with Remind. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely a good thought. I definitely get that. You know, especially considering that Namor has already confirmed that uh, there's multiple Kingdom Hearts teams now. Uh, you know, but Osaka is the one I feel that's going to be, you know, given the numbered titles or the more important titles or whatever. But I would like to see what these other teams have in store when it comes to Kingdom Hearts' own identity when it comes to what Sky brought up in terms of how they can change it up, what they could bring to the table, what can they do in order to retain, you know, the essence of Kingdom Hearts, uh, but at the same time bringing in new aspects because ever since Kingdom Hearts won, you know, moving forward with the Kingdom Hearts games, they've always explored widely different avenues of gameplay options and widely different avenues of, like, gameplay mechanics. You know, starting with Chain of Memories, the card-based system. Kingdom Hearts 2 was the sequel to 1. We had 358 Days dealing with uh, the panel system and the days system. We had Dream Drop Distance dealing with the drop system, Birth by Sleep with the three stories. You know, like, refining the command deck, recoded, refining the command deck even more. 
and uh, you know, Chain of Memories being the mo not Chain of Memories, uh, Kingdom Hearts Key being the mobile game, so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. So I like to see other avenues of gameplay options explored more uh, with Kingdom Hearts moving forward when it comes to the 20th anniversary in the Phase Two. Now, uh, before I get into the whole spiel of like once again. Uh, thinking about the 20th anniversary and the 20th anniversary event, I want to talk about uh, your favorite moments within that of Kingdom Hearts that truly told you that this was the series, that this was it. We talked about how you guys got introduced into Kingdom Hearts. We talked about your favorite characters and what makes them the favorite to you. But now I want to talk about your favorite moments within that of the series that really told you, like, okay. This is it. This is this is the series I'm gonna stick with with the rest of my life. All right, I already see Dean like having that big goofy smile on his face. So we're gonna start with Dean. Oh brother, I had like three different <laughs> answers. But, no, I mean, go, yeah, no. yo, go for it. Go for it. Okay, okay. I mean, I, I was progressing through my Kingdom Hearts uh, career, you could say, and uh, <laughs> one cutscene that really does stick out to me. Um. It might be just because cutscenes were unskippable in Kingdom Hearts 1. And I'm not going to say Riku Ansem, but uh, oh. the scene before Guard Armor, actually, where Sora meets Donald and Goofy for the first time. And like they were kind of teasing you during Traverse Town the whole time with the idea of Donald and Goofy being somewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Him finally getting to meet them and kind of getting closure on that little subplot gave my six-year-old brain like such satisfaction and i was so excited because i was like i actually have friends in this game and, <laughs> and goofy had so much health why does he have so much more health than me and like just i was so pulled into the game and from that point on i was sold i think on kingdom hearts forever uh but you know talking about like my favorite story moment that's just a little side thing but my favorite story yeah. moment what i believe is truly I think the most well done cut scene maybe ever in Kingdom Hearts. There's more scenes like it, you know, they're, they're, they come here and there, these really special scenes, but this one is really special. And that is Blank Points in Birth by Sleep. Ooh. Blank Points in Birth by oh, Sleep, that bro. Is, <laughs> that's that, hard. yo, that's that hard. hurts me so good. <laughs> wait, 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 where in Black Points though? Where? Where? No, you where? Know where. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I might know where, but like, I want to make sure. I, okay, this is where I think where. Where I'm like, it zooms in on Ansem's face, and it says the yes. two that were never meant to be. Let's go! Yes! yes Let's course. go! <laughs> and then, like, you like the zoom out of Ansem's eyes and the fucking the, the coat, where it's like, yes. who are you? And I'm like, oh, hello. And then, like, it ends off with, you know, Sora and everyone saying Sora, 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 and Aqua cry. Oh. It is the most beautifully oh. done cutscene ever so I've seen in Kingdom it's Hearts, so and I wasn't even mad that the secret ending wasn't CGI this time because it was it was so that so shit was good. like you fuckers, see, that man. Was awesome. oh. The oh. tear down Aqua's cheek, like oh my god! I finished Birth by Sleep that night. I, I remember I was like laying on the couch or something with my PSP and my headphones in. My heart was pumping. That was the closest Kingdom Hearts ever got me to crying. My hands were shaking and I just had to go take a walk outside. Like just go <laughs> walk around. And I had the biggest smile on my face, like permanently glued to my face. Like I think I took a walk outside. My neighbors just saw this kid like smiling at them. They're like, he's never been that friendly before. But man, like that's Blank Points. Blank Points is the greatest No, no, scene, no. Man. Blank Points was so good. Like even the build up to that scene where it shows like you know the memories of their backs like etched into their minds and then you see just Ansem wa watching like um Apprentice Zaynor and Break just walk off and he's like yo there's something right about those two and then just like leading into that like it was it, like uh, the the, po the poetry in that scene is that he sees these two and these two would literally cause you know the insurrection of their apprentices against Ansem it was like you know him first noticing something's wrong and then it goes into like, like the the, the what do you call it? the outcome to all of everything going wrong with his apprentices and him ending up in the realm of darkness and Amina and Aqua. I'm like, when people were like, yo, no more is that like when people say no more is a bad writer, no more is a hack. I'm like, yo, look at black points. Don't don't fucking at me. <laughs> right? Like holy shit. All right, oh Dean, thank you so much. That was amazing. All right, Sarah, <laughs> you got you got some big shoes to fill. Let's get it. 
You're up. <laughs> but this question <laughs> is actually like really hard for me. I, <laughs> like I don't. I will say I think Kingdom Hearts has the best intros and outros ever of any video game series, and I definitely include those in being some of my favorite moments of Kingdom Hearts. I know it's mm -hmm. kind of like cliche, but like those are the some of those are what really like grab me and pull me in and make me want to play. Um, but I do have like some other like select cutscenes that I really like. I really like uh for me like the Hall of Bastion portion of Kingdom Hearts 1 is like one of my favorite parts of the whole series and I really like the my friends are my power part and I really like the part where Kyrie brings Sora back after he turns into a heartless like nice. I just love those moments so much um I I really um days moved me a lot whenever that came out um the scene with like Shion like fading away like that was also like any emotional part <laughs> is what makes me love Kingdom Hearts I love feeling emotions so those are like my all-time favorite parts the part with roxas in the beginning of kingdom hearts 2 and he says looks like my summer vacation's almost over oh like, don't I just, hurt me that oh, there's just so much emotional depth in kingdom hearts and i that's what i love about it that's what makes me like just always want to keep going and then i know it's like more recent but i always talk about the scene for some reason it just really moved me but the part with uh Ventus in Kingdom Hearts 3, the thank you for keeping me safe. Like, I just, that scene is so good. Because so, yeah, like, it, was, it was the culmination. Like, finally, 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 Ventus woke up. And Ventus was always aware. It's like, thank you for always keeping me safe. Yes. Yeah, and if you ask me this that question, like, later I'll have a lot more answers. But it's just really hard. There's a lot. <laughs> well, then we'll, we'll definitely get back to you then. All right. <laughs> so, uh, yo, yo, keep thinking. All right, Sky, you are up. Bring it up I, to the I, have, I have two moments in particular one that takes it, place in the, in the far past and one that's a little more recent but um the first one is uh my first initial playthrough of kingdom hearts 2 after you beat uh zigbar you know you have that cut scene whatever and riku joins your party for the first time you know he takes the hood right. off he's all he's all sexy everyone's ah you know he's great. <laughs> so but i didn't know he was like crazy good like he was like nasty so the first time you go <laughs> like into the door and the the you know Xemnas throws the building and they fly into the back and they're like oh no and they turn around we could take them on our own Whoosh! some of the people that is forever in my psyche as the first time in my life I think I flew out of my seat <laughs> with hype just and then you start walking and then you just reaction command the building into pieces I'm like this is this I peaked there's the there's this is it <laughs> that that's so my moment. Rewarding. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my god, this is the Disney game. I was in yeah. Hall of, uh, I, I was in was it Jack Skeleton earlier? Oogie Boogie hanging like that's crazy. That yeah, I think crazy. like back like to Kingdom Hearts One after seeing Sora do uh, slice those buildings, and I'm like, man, my small beginnings. Look at me now. <laughs> right, and you you, you see him just fly, just like oh yeah, he's flying towards the Xemnas yeah. Dragon and everything like that, just like blowing up the engines and just like zooming up. I'm like, damn, all right, Sora, look at you yeah, go. Yeah, right, like. <laughs> And uh, I, I think the more the second memory that a lot more recent is uh, outside of, you know, Sora's inclusion in Super Smash Brothers, which is like a super memorable uh, moment. But I'm someone who like plays Smash outside of like his inclusion. So I got a little worried when he, he was announced. because I'm like, am I going to like him? Am I going to like playing as him? Like, is he is he going to fit in my hands? Because like I've always had like character crisis. I've always jumped between <laughs> somebody. Yeah. And when Sora was finally in my hands, it was like I was finally rewarded for all my offstage behavior. And it just clicked. I'm like, he's the one he's the one i've been waiting for my whole life like it was much more intimate as a kingdom hearts fan but as a smash player i was like that he feels great and i just like playing him it's so cool you know that that i was like he's fun and he's in smash Bros. <laughs> like <laughs> oh, that's crazy oh no that, that's great too man like i've been playing sora for like sora and smash non-stop he's actually mm -hmm. like had like in the time that he's come out like it's literally months and the time he's come out versus years of smash being out He's actually had more playtime uh, than Link in uh, Smash Bros. for me. Oh my I have God. like more he had win a rate for like, yeah, like it's it's insane. Like Sora is the one, man. So like, I was scared of that too. I was really scared that Sora wasn't gonna be fun or I wasn't gonna be able to connect with him. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, this is it. This is this is <laughs> everything I've been waiting for. Oh my God, man. But when it comes to like my memories 
my most memorable things about Kingdom Hearts. I like, you know, call, call me a, a, a Roxas freak or a Roxas fanboy. A lot of things, a lot of them had to deal with Roxas. And I, I feel like one big one that, you know, dealt with, like, it was both in Kingdom Hearts 2 and in 358 Days, but 358 Days gave it a lot more context where, you know, Roxas really, really having that, like, like that mental psychotic breakdown. It's like, you know what? Fuck everything. I'm gone. Where he's like, why did I have? Why do I have the Keyblade? Where did I learn it? Why am I so special? Why is all this thing? And Axel was just like, you just have to trust me. Rox is like, you know what? I don't. I can't. Oh my god! And he just like I... <laughs> the way they the way they teased that scene all through Kingdom Hearts Two was wild. He's like, shut up! And it would cut yeah. to black. And then yeah. we finally got the like the tech off. Like, oh, we get the rest of this cutscene finally after like right? twenty hours of playing the game. Like, let's go. It, it was so good and. Like him just finally like walking away is like like you know it, the crazy thing is like he had the 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 winner popsicle which I have right over there. He's like he he looks at him, he's like I'm sorry I really tried but there's no reason for me to be here anymore and he just walks off and then Axel's like you're really going off they're gonna destroy you. He's like no one will miss me and I'm like Man! and then Axel's <laughs> like. That's not true. I would. And I'm like, yo, this is. They're they're supposed to be nobodies, man. What's going on? And then, you know, finally getting the culmination of seeing uh, another side of the story deep dive in action through Two Five Eight Days and in Kingdom Hearts Two was just like it, it was so pal uh, palatable. But then, one thing, like, of course, I've had moments time and time again throughout Kingdom Hearts that really spelled like this was for me. But then. Dream Job Distance came along. That's why I always stand Dream Job Distance in my house, where Sora finally, 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 Dina Ray knows, he, where he finally, finally understood everything Roxas went to. When Roxas passed on his memories onto Sora in Dream Job Distance, where he's like, yo, this really could have been the other way around, but it has to be you. And he's like, what do you mean? And he's like, it has to be you. Like it can't. It, it was never gonna be me because it was always gonna be you. And he's like, "Oh, you, you like you deserve to be your own person." And Rox is like, "See, that's why it has to be you." And then he gave him all his memories. I'm like, "Bro, that shit hurt." Kingdom Hearts hurts in the best type of way. Ugh, I love this series. It's so good. Oh my god, Miss Click, I'm here because I was told HMK loves Terra now. Who is telling lies? Who? Who? You? He's you about really? To glow. He's about to glow up substantially. I can't. No, he's not. This no, he's not. No, he's not. Terra's you about know, to go no, 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 no. S. No, 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 no. Miss Click actually had to unleash this like demon in me once again. It was like it was now packed. I was like, you know, I'm not gonna bring Terra up in the stream at all. No. But then Miss Click had to show up, and everyone's all like, yeah, man, why are you hating Terra? Terra redeemed himself. Like, no, he did no, it. Didn't. He no, did it. He did it. Yeah, he did it. He literally got I saved. Agree. And nothing happened. With people like, yeah, why are you hating on Terra? Like, Terra did nothing. And it's crazy because, like, Eric is like, Terra, watch over them for me. It's like, what? You want all this shit to happen again? And then Rimind, Terra's like, Riku, I have nothing left to teach you. You didn't teach him shit. The fuck? Riku became a master and you did it. Riku deserves to be the one who watches over all of departure, which he kind of did in Rimind. He's like, fuck Terra. Terra did nothing. Terra literally did nothing. And then the morals are like, hey, man, Terra, look at Terra. He's such a cool character. He could take on two Xeno replicas at once. I'm like, you Terra, the fuck? You know, Rox is out here literally with two keyblades and stuff and is able to block. <sighs> I'm sorry. Sir, did you figure out the rest of the stories you're going <laughs> to give? Because I need to throw it over to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, I was going to say uh, I like the secret ending that alludes to Birth by Sleep that everyone thought was Kingdom Hearts 3. I think that is one of my most core memories. Oh my god. <laughs> I remember reading <laughs> what forums a time. about that, like dissecting that. Like, yeah. why? Who, like, why is that, why is Roxas here with this blue-haired girl? Like, what is going yeah. on? Yeah. Like, like, was... Everyone was somebody like... was selling Kingdom Hearts three copies online with like a photoshopped yes! artwork yeah. of that <laughs> and it was scene. Yeah, somebody and made it was bread. Who, who, somebody made where did that so money go? Bread. Yeah, that money's <laughs> gone. <laughs> people, those pre-orders never <laughs> got filled. Somebody made so much money off that. I'm just saying, that's crazy. It was for Man. a PlayStation 3 that wasn't announced yet. <laughs> yeah, and, and, like, the, the cover said Kingdom Hearts 3, the Keyblade Wars. And then yeah. on the back it said yeah. Burst by Sleep. Nothing's left the chance. I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, it's going to get dark. <laughs> I mean, Burst by Sleep was, was it did, but, but not like what I thought it would be. <laughs> right, right, right. Kingdom Hearts is wild. Because the end of that cutscene is literally just 
Mickey looking over the horizon menacingly. Like, what? You know, it's like, funny. Like, like, if you say that out dude, of context, that. then people are going to think you're crazy. <laughs> like, no, I, I, I showed my dad that co that, that cut scene like, when I was younger because I was like, oh, I've been kidding Martin. So I'm like, hey, dad, and my dad's a locksmith. I'm like, hey, dad, you're going to like this. It's like, you know, keys and stuff like keys are weapons in this. You know, you you make keys. <laughs> you're right? a locksmith. You're going to love Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. I, and I have an additional story to that. So then um, he sees the cut scene and he's like, oh, wow, 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 wow. This is crazy. This is crazy. He sees Mickey at the set. At the end, he's like, "What the fuck? What's Mickey Mouse doing there?" And I'm like, "Cause it's, it's Disney. It's so like, yo." And then he's like, he looks at me. He's like, "Yo, this is so dumb, Mijo. This is like the dumbest thing ever." So, and then whenever he visits my house, he he always be eyeballing the Keyblade and shit. He's like, "Yo, Mijo, come on, let me take this home. Let me take this home." I'm like, no. This is mine. It's like, come on, it's a key. And I'm like, like, I'm a key and I'm a locksmith. I'm like, let me take that. Come on. And I'm like, no, no, get your own. What let you doing? Like, <laughs> he was like, literally, I bought my keyblades. So I'm like, no, you can't have those. Those are mine. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, and so, um, with Birth by Sleep, the, the Birth by Sleep secret, like, my, you know what's my favorite part in that Birth by Sleep gathering secret movie is when, like, uh, Zeno was kicking Terra's ass, and this is before I disliked Terra's so, I mean, like, it's not like, oh, Zeno was kicking Terra's ass, ass. Oh, whoa. He was just, like, this old man was beating the shit out of this younger dude, and then Ventus came to help, and then Zeno just grabbed, like, disappeared, grabbed him from the back of the head, and, like, with his bare hands, like, was breaking his helmet. And I'm like, this is Kingdom Hearts? Like, in the same game, we play a balloon bouncing game with Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, <laughs> this was 2005, 2006. Crazy time. Like, yeah, like he was, he was just like, just like, oh, what is like with, with two fingers, like just like breaking it, and I'm like, and then like he said, and then he said, I call, I said ice fire, and like he set him on ice fire, and just like threw him over. It is. He really gets freed up. The thing about that too is like he's holding Ven. Ven's like trying to get out, and Zayn yeah. is so unfazed, like a like, he's just like. Yo, remember when they crazy. remember when they turned that scene into a medal in Union Cross? I'm like, they fucking didn't. No, like, no way. <laughs> and like, if you guys don't play Union Cross, they actually turned that scene where Zaynor is just like holding Ventus by his head, like into a medal, and like That's it was like Master Zaynor, Master Zaynor EX Plus, and I'm like, excuse me, That's, <laughs> that was so badass. But yeah, I like Sarah. I definitely feel you like that. That bird by sleep. Secret move was just in so insane for so many reasons too. It's like this ain't Sora, Riku, and Kairi. Why are who are these people? Why are they wearing armor? And then you see the Zemnis dragon get slain by Terra, which was never explored in the actual Birth by Sleep. And then you see mm -hmm. all these Keyblades on the field. Yeah. And then because like that was a, that was a point in time where we all thought Kingdom Heart like Keyblades were a rarity, not a commodity. And then like you yeah. see them all on the field and like. What happened? Here? <laughs> like, what happened? Here? I used to get super upset when anyone but Sora had a keyblade. I was so weird. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I was the same way. I was the same way. <laughs> like when more and more people came, got came, uh, get uh, start getting keyblades, I'm like, yo, what? This is supposed to be something special, and I found like, like it is special, but it ain't as rare as you thought. And I'm like, oh, 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 I think it's valid. It's valid. Right. Yeah, I think it's cool now, but when I was a kid, I was just like, wow, Sora's the Keyblade Master, and then they kind of like took it back. <laughs> yeah, they're like, no, he's like, just a like, They're like, <laughs> actually, he's anything. not even a master. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He doesn't need he's not to even be. a hero. He's better he's than all the masters. Uh, uh, he, he, like, <laughs> titles are irrelevant, you know, because like, a lot of, I see a lot of people keep saying that, like, yo, yo when is Sora gonna be a master? He deserves to be a master. I'm like, one, he doesn't need to the master, and then two, I'm pretty sure he doesn't even give a shit. Like, and like, if that's Sora's yeah. character to not he care. Really don't. He doesn't yeah. care. It's much more important to recoup to be like, oh, this is a test of my strength and how my relationship with the darkness. But yes. Sora's like <laughs> the whole exam, so it's just like, all right. Look, man, they they don't have a curriculum or anything. They're just making it up. So yeah, <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, for real. How they go for the birth by sleep exam to that? Like, there's no in between. Like, how? Mm -mm. I just, I guess I just like, uh, I just feel like he deserves it for everything he's done. But I also, I don't know if you guys have ever heard me rant about Hercules, but that's like a whole No, other go, story. go, go. I want to hear this. Go ahead. Hercules. I hate Hercules in Kingdom Hearts. I think he is useless. <laughs> oh, no. I could, I could agree with what? that. He, is. he absolutely no, no, no. is. 
No, I want to hear is, this perspective. I've never heard this in my life. <laughs> yeah, let's get it. He's literally useless, okay? No, listen. He's so, tired all the time. It's yeah! Nice. You're always happy to clean up after him. Like, and then he, and then feels like, oh, you're just a junior hero. I had to clean up after your hero over here. What are you talking about? Like, literally, he can't even fight Cerberus. <laughs> he's too weak to fight Cerberus. And then we have he's to fight the Hydra for him. And he's like, he's like sitting there having like a mental breakdown. Like, you're a hero! <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, okay, I, I, Look, I man, get it. Heroes no. have feelings too. But he, okay, but why aren't we a hero? Is what I'm trying to say. No, I, 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 I agree. No, Sora I feel, should have been the first hero. I, I feel that Sora is a hero now because he finally yeah. understood, like, the ideal of yo, know, like, I'm willing to give my life for others, which I feel yeah. like wasn't really explored beforehand in Kingdom Hearts, only because Sora was so busted. But then, like, when when Sora finally found the moment in time where push came to shove then he was willing to give up his life for others and he did and i feel now that he should be considered like a true hero and besides you know like like i i understand the rant sir i really do but then at the end of <laughs> kingdom Hearts 2 you see the constellation which says like yeah he's a real hero now because like yeah, they made the constellation. The thing. Yeah. yeah but it, it like took the... forever it took forever it was it was just ridiculous i don't know <laughs> yeah I, I get it i get it and even in also... chain of memories too yeah, yeah, Olympus is also like a notch away from like being Agrabud, where it's like that plot line of Hercules being tired has been used in all the spinoff games so many mm -hmm. times. You're like, yo, get up, get up, stretch, <laughs> like, please. I bought a new forty dollar game for you to tell me you were asleep again, please. So, oh my god, I... <laughs> you guys just this just made me so mad because you made me remember one of my hopes that I used to have for Kingdom Hearts three, where I was really, really. Really, really hoping that Yen Sid would give the responsibility of making Sora a Keyblade Master to Phil and just say to Sora, like, once this guy approves the, of you being a hero, then I will make you a master and make that the first world in the game. And then Phil finally giving his word that, like, you know what, kid, that would have been you hot. are a true that hero. And hot. then Sora is a Keyblade Master. I would have been screaming and jumping off the walls, but, you know, not, not yeah. quite what happened. While I agree, I'm tired of Olympus. I just... Yeah, but, but that would have been that would have been the last time. That would have been the ending. Yeah, that would have been the last, yeah. Yeah, okay. been the last okay. time. Because <laughs> okay. Olympus is done now, so you know. I hope fine. so. Because because they, they finally, it's so funny. Like when it comes to Olympus, they finally reached the movie plot of Olympus in Kingdom Hearts Three. Isn't that insane to think about? Like throughout that is, twenty years it's in of every Kingdom game Hearts. besides Dream Drop. <laughs> yeah, that's that's <laughs> wild. <laughs> So salty it started with olympus like i just uh, it was cool it was the coolest olympus in my opinion other than i think it would have been nice to have like uh the tournaments yeah the Coliseum. Um, yeah. but i just yeah the Coliseum. but i just feel like it's like i wish we could have started like somewhere that wasn't like a disney world that's like my one thing about kingdom hearts 3 that i dislike the most like i know you could because... consider like 0 0.2 to be the I understand that, but I still, I still didn't want to start there. I, I don't want. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Sarah Key, you technically Olympus is Kingdom Hearts 2.9, though. I understand, <laughs> that. I understand that. doesn't make anything better. No, no, I, 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 <laughs> no. No, I, no, I hate, to to I hate that. That's Twilight actually a two thing. Seconds. We go like, to Twilight Town and say hey to Hainer. <laughs> Yeah, we take pictures, you know. I <laughs> I wanted to do but, something more impactful like Kingdom Hearts 2, like yeah. with the, the whole rocks and stuff. That's, like, that's all. I, I just I'm just salty about Olympus. That's it, it's just that. <laughs> no, nah, it's it's very understandable. And then Hayner was all like, no, so it's like, wow, it's been forever since I saw you, Hayner. Hayner's like, it hasn't really been that long. Which is like the funny like meta joke I feel within like Square Enix is like, yo, it's been a while. And I'm like, it actually hasn't because it's not even like it hasn't even been a year since Kingdom Hearts 2 when it comes to 2 to 3, right? And that gave um, me whiplash when Hayner said it hasn't been that long. <laughs> and I'm like, right, right. But uh, going off the tangent where like Sarah started when it comes to like, you know, some of our favorite moments. Let's talk about those for a little bit when it comes to the uh, secret movies throughout Kingdom Hearts 3. Like, it, it will start with Dean with blank points and continue on with Sarah when it comes to, like, uh, Birds by Sleep. So let's continue that avenue of discussion 
since these two uh, already had their perspectives, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to Sky when it comes to, like, how did you feel when it comes to these conceptual visions of the future that Namora, you know, decide to sprinkle on because you know people talk about the mcu and the post credit end credit scenes like nah man i've been feeling that since kingdom hearts so let's talk about that a little bit sky i'm gonna just say my mine is something that came from uh, kingdom hearts one final mix like the it's not really the, the like the secret ending but it's a uh, it's an exclusive to that where you fight xemnas yeah i think that's that, that's that scene is one of the most hardcore scenes in the series where he doesn't even say nothing and did, I have I have goofy and Sam like in my yeah. head like he says it in that room <laughs> and the text flies he goes through him shoots the lightning Sora flies gravel falls it's mad slow motion it zooms in on him they're prep it's so that scene and then the music is like doo, 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 doo. you know like how oh my god that is master class Kingdom Hearts build though I'm just like that right there and then the fight and, is great too yo and the conversation that Sora had with Zemnis were like uh, Zemnis like what are you like what are you talking about and Zemnis like you are incomplete and i'm like i am what now and then like when he goes off he's like you know i am merely just a shell and then how that finally and then like, i have to go off a couple of tangents when it comes to that whole discussion when Zemnis finally meets up with roxas is like i've been to see him he looks a lot like you right it's like who are you it's like um it's like my name is of no importance so, like maybe I'll, i'm all that ever was i'm all i'm what's left and then I constantly talk about this on Twitter, and I say this time and time again on streams where I'm like, maybe I would have liked Terra more if Namora actually decided to explore the avenues of the Terra, Ventus, Xemnas, Roxas parallels that was obviously being set up throughout Kingdom Hearts and even was alluded to in the beta Birth by Sleep trailers, right? Because if you haven't seen the first trailer for Birth by Sleep, the Jump Festa trailer, where it shows Terra having a conversation with Ventus at the Great Maw in Hollow Bastion, um... You see Terra like come down and he's walking towards Ventus the same way Xemnas was walking towards Roxas at the dark margin. And then he does like the whole hand of the shoulder thing and he like converts it with him like, Ugh! and then they fucking took that out of the 358 Days movie where if you actually played 358 Days the game when Roxas falls asleep and when Sykes goes away, he's like, after Xemnas like, will he wake from this? When Sykes goes away to himself, Xemnas tells Roxas is like, so sleep has taken you yet again. And I'm like, Nyah! but they're just like, they're just wiping all that clean. And I'm like, man, whatever. But that was a good, that's a good one, Sky. I like that. I liked it a lot. All right. I'm throwing it over to Dean now. Let's go. Secret Me? movies. Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> I just have one, I have one comment on something you said earlier. That scene, I know you were talking about it in a very serious context with Roxas oh meeting Xemnas. <clears throat> and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, he's like, who are you? I'm what's left. Or maybe I'm all there ever was. You have like Xemnas looking all like dark and brooding sitting against the philosophical, rock. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the camera like pants to Roxas. He's hooded, but you know what his face looks like under that hood. And he's like. I meant your name. Like he's like, boy, I'm not. I'm not having none of this Kingdom Hearts talk. Like, who are you? I don't know who I am. Who are you? <laughs> Imagine trying to talk to someone. They start speaking riddles like that. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is I, who are you? I'm what's left, or maybe I'm all that ever was. Yo, I meant your name. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> then, Sir, this then, is a Wendy's. Exactly, that's exactly what it is. And then, <laughs> and, and then this continues with that shit. And he's like, my name is no importance. What about you? And then I was like, bro, I asked you first. Like, <laughs> That's one of the best um, scenes for the wrong reasons, <laughs> but it's, it's so good. No, it's really good because Paul St. Peter, the voice of Xemnas, he's told me multiple times. It's like, you know, I love playing Xemnas because he's so over dramatic. And I'm like, yeah, 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 he is. He is. And then he's like, I, I love playing Xemnas. Oh, my God. But that, that was great. But it was that all you had to say or you just wanted to add to that and then continue to your point? Well, yeah, I mean, secret movies, I already talked about my favorite, but just the concept of secret movies and kind of secret bosses in Kingdom Hearts is something that I only really saw with this series at, at first. And I feel like I feel like it's kind of a big thing in media now. But Kingdom Hearts, the way they tease the future of the series has always been one of my favorite parts of the game. I'm always, you know, purposely picking proud mode, trying to 
get to the end of the game and see if there's anything after the credits that excitement has come become sort of a tradition for kingdom hearts and i think that's super super cool and it's usually when it comes around to the final mix time we get a boss that hints at the future of the series and they hit it out of the park with the azora yet again i'm just i'm so happy so proud of them i'm glad they're keeping up the traditions because uh that kind of stuff is really important to me and yeah i love it i i hope they never stop yeah me neither that's like you know of course I, 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 there's a lot of people that only watch mc movies in order to get to the cut of the ending scene and that they don't enjoy the movie on the way they, they just want to know what's next right and Kingdom Hearts does that in such a good way where I'm like, I enjoy the game, but also I always have solace knowing that I'm looking forward to something more beyond that of what's next. Like, like when I beat the game, I will never, I will never feel alone and left in the dark when beating the game in terms of like, you know, wanting to know what's next and wanting to know what's more. And that's something I really do appreciate with Kingdom Hearts and something that I like, like Dean said, I hope they never get rid of. Now, um, I know Sarah already talked about a little bit about Birth by Sleep, The Gathering, and whatnot. But if you have anything else to add when it comes to secret movies, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, um, sometimes I miss like the early 2000s style of the secret endings with like the font, like like almost like an AMV, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like the fonts all oh, like like, like diagonal font, and like yeah. just the style of it. Um, but I really liked. Uh, I feel like we haven't really talked about like the latest one. I really like the Kingdom Hearts 3 secret ending a lot, uh, regardless of that. Like, it's, first of all, it's gorgeous. Um, and yeah, like Dean said, like, I love that we're keeping up the, the tradition because it makes you feel really rewarded for, like, playing the game on more difficult modes or accomplishing a lot. And then just having this, like, teaser to look forward to is so nice. But I'm really excited to see, like, what that Kingdom Hearts 3 secret ending was all about because that was, like, just mm -hmm. so good. Man, I just, I'm ready to feel the full force of Namora's revenge. Like that Kingdom Hearts <laughs> three ending scene. Like I, 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 I recorded the video about it. It should be out on Sunday, and uh, it's part of my Kingdom Hearts memories um, mini series leading up to the 20th anniversary and whatnot. And it, it the whole idea of the Yazora secret movie was just so exhilarating and so hilarious to think about because i honestly and this honest to god like i really did not expect yazora to amount to anything beyond that of you know a little easter egg that no more decided to you know stuff into mm, toy story i said this in the video like the perspective i thought was that like you know since final fantasy exists in kingdom hearts we can't have rex play final fantasy 15 so let's make a final fantasy 15-esque title for him to play Varum Rex, that's it. He's playing Final Fantasy 15, but it's not Final Fantasy 15. I thought that was it, right? And then the Yazora secret movie came out, and I watched it, and I'm like, Yazora's real? Excuse me? And then Shibuya, Shinjuku, like, dude, like, I, I, I was floored. And I'm like, it, it really, like, brings into perspective the same thing that I've been saying time and time again. People are like, yo, how am I supposed to be hyped? How am I supposed to be excited? How am I supposed to be looking forward to the Kingdom Hearts in the future after Zayn or Saga is over? And like, what, what more that can, that can can there be? And then Azora's like, allow me to introduce myself. You know, same thing with MCU. It's like, oh, after we beat Thanos, uh, Avengers Endgame, what's more to see? Have you seen Spider-Man No Way Home? Yo, like, there is much more to seek. So go forth now and seek it like that that yazora mm. and then after remind it was just over i'm just ready for kingdom Hearts 4 or verum rex or yazora all that good jazz i need it now dylan sprouse shoot it into my veins i am so excited for that now uh no go, for, go for. Uh, no no go 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 i was just gonna ask do you guys think that they would come out with a verum rex game with like that exact cover art please because that'd be kind of cool that'd be galaxy brain <laughs> that would be, be really cool that's all. Sorry, that's all I wanted to ask. Yeah. HMK, uh, yeah. before we move on, I wanted to ask you a question. I'm just personally curious. Ooh. <clears throat> uh, you know, they they introduce Yazora now. They're kind of doing a, a lot of stuff where they're kind of showing, you know, Sora the sky, Yazora the night sky. Yazora's kind of the other side of the coin to Sora. They even have Sora Station of Awakening flash before the stage changes before his secret boss. Do you see yourself in the future ever liking Yazora more than Roxas? Ooh, blind 
turned it by the that light. Ooh was, oh. That ooh was so loud, your mic cut out. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. So, Nat, Dean, Dean forced my hand. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Dean forced my hand. I was going to save this segment for later on the stream, but Dean forced my hand. All right. It's incredibly possible for Yazora to somehow overtake Rox. This is my favorite character. And I feel that you guys might have to find out about that on Monday because I plan to release a very, 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 very special video uh, in celebration of the 20th anniversary, which is happening this Monday, the 28th, in which I am going to be putting out my top... 20 for the 20th anniversary my top 20 kingdom Hearts characters of all time which will not only act as a celebration for the 20th anniversary but will also act as not only a sequel but also a remake of my first ever kingdom hearts video 10 years ago which was my top 10 kingdom hearts characters so that's really interesting that you brought that up it could be entirely possible that Somehow, if I learn more about Yazora, he could overtake Roxas. But at this point in time, he's a very, very valid contender. I'm just going to say that. Oh, bro. That's, that, <laughs> yeah, that, Dylan, Dylan Sprouse kind of went yeah. crazy. He, he no, had like he did. 40 words in the whole thing. And I know wow. he's always wanted to do that. He's always wanted to yeah. do that. He was yep, so excited definitely. to voice him. Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be great. But as we move on to the next segment, uh, we are now going to move on to the Q&A segment for us here on the Key Keepers uh, Kingdom Hearts 20th Anniversary Memory Stream, uh, where I have some questions from Twitter. But if you have questions that we could answer to all of us, leave them in the chat, and then we're going to go ahead and get our feet wet with a couple of them right now. Here's the first question from Mohammed F110 stating... Do you think they will announce Kingdom Hearts 4 at this year's E3 or the Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary event? And uh what would you and would you like to be in the game? Thoughts? Yo, put me in, coach. Put me in. <laughs> put me put me in any game. Why would I ever no, I would hate to be in Kingdom Hearts. You know, that sounds awful. <laughs> you know, if, every now and again I do get questions like, how would you like it if they model the character after you in Kingdom Hearts? And I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe if they actually it, if Square Enix or Disney actually hits me up and asks me to voice like an NPC, I feel that enough will be a, an amazing honor. But I honestly do think they're gonna announce Kingdom Hearts 4 this year, either at the 20th anniversary or E3. Uh Sarah, what do you think? I mean, I think this is like the biggest event. For Kingdom Hearts in a very long time. I think it would make sense to announce Kingdom Hearts 4 at the 20th anniversary, even if it's just a teaser. Like, it doesn't have to be like a release date or even like gameplay. I but I think at least a teaser would personally to me make sense. I don't really know. Um, but yeah. Uh that I definitely, definitely agree. Uh let's ask Dean when it comes to that question specifically. Yeah, I'm I mean, you never want to be confident before an event, but I'm pretty confident. Um, they're definitely going to announce Kingdom Hearts 4. They're, they're definitely going to announce yeah! Kingdom Hearts 4, but they're going to announce actually the game before Kingdom Hearts 4 first and maybe show a lot about that game. A lot about that game. Maybe that game's coming very soon and maybe end off the event with Kingdom Hearts 4. A short announcement just telling you, hey, this game is real. We're making it. Osaka's making it. And uh, look forward to this game before Kingdom Hearts 4. That's my prediction. Yeah. If anything, just like a small teaser with like ending off with the logo or anything like that. Just like, yo, Kingdom Hearts 4 is in development. Oh, God. No, no. I don't want to go through that again. Never mind. <laughs> like, remember the now development thing? Just like. <sighs> hey, man. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for it. <laughs> let, let, like, uh, they get me off this crazy ride. All right. Sky, what do you think? Yeah, no, that I it'd be a wasted opportunity for them to not drop at least a teaser of the game. I just that's I feel like that's a given. I'm more so interested in whatever else they have to announce because this is whole event. Like, what are they showing these people? And what, right. are, what are they in store for? You know, as fans in that room, you know, so they always do the fancy stuff that we'll never see 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> the behind closed, you know, sometimes it's been a while, but you know, they're, they're probably gonna get something spicy that we'll never see. The, the oh, exactly. Event. Like, there's gonna be some, and then they already confirmed that we're gonna see a video based on the event at a later time. And I feel they're gonna release the video of the event at a later time, but then if they have any announcements, it's just gonna drop, 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 right? But then, you know, people there are gonna see it in real time, and then us, we're gonna have to wait like maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe an hour for it to actually drop for the public. Uh, but oh, uh, we're a gonna... lot better about that now. Oh yeah, definitely, we used to have definitely. to wait months. We used to have to wait months. Uh, remember Cable Town and the and the and the drawing that they had Forget to do that. for like. Do you remember the localization Separate. times between the Japanese and the English games? Don't we were like, oh no, worldwide release. These are two days apart. Kingdom Hearts games used to be months apart. <laughs> like right. <laughs> Then the the scans would be online. You have to wait like eight months for it to come out in your region. I was just like, oh my god, I don't want to see it. Yeah, and I know none of us dealt with this problem, but people in Europe, they got the game like seven months after us, and it's not even. <laughs> it's the the game still released in English over there in some cases. So like, mm -hmm. it was it was just really bad. Birth by Sleep took nine months to come out for us. You know that? Yeah, nine months. <laughs> nine months, and then Recoded came out like five months after. That's crazy, <laughs> man. I don't want to think about those times, but I, I hopefully we're past them now. Now, when it comes to the next question, we have Focus Fire coming in asking, do you think they'll announce the rumored Disney Plus series and or a feature length film by Disney Animation for theaters at the event? All right, I'm going to throw this over to Sky because I feel that's right up his alley. No, because that's everything I dreamed of. And they would never <laughs> give me. They would. They would never give me what I wanted. So there's, <laughs> there's no way. I would love that. I would adore that. But there's no way. Uh -oh. I, 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 I want to see Sora in like different art styles and stuff. Like see, like oh my god, like today they just dropped that uh, the wonderful world the Mickey Mouse thing and like Minnie's yeah, holding the, a box and the Kingdom Key D's in there. Yeah, like, that's so cool. Like whoever drew, like they, that was a multitude. That was a process. Like that had to get approved. That had to be, you know, storyboarded. Somebody had to design the prop. Like that was a communication, and no one wrote it all. I was like, okay, that's cool. That's awesome. More yeah, of that, please. Super, super, super dope. I, you know, for me, when it comes to the Disney Plus series, you know, it's been heavily rumored, and then some insiders, like, confirm that yes, something's being worked on. But I feel that something. That was, you know, whispered into existence and it like, you know, they ran with it. You know, I feel that a lot of people have too many eggs in the basket for the perspective, for the prospect of a Kingdom Hearts Disney Plus series. And if it doesn't end up happening, I feel that, you know, you guys should gird yourself uh, to not be disappointed because honestly, you know, I need a little bit more than just, you know, an insider posting a gif possibly hinting at the fact that the disney plus series is happening right so i'm like if it happens cool if it doesn't i wasn't really like having too much in that race right mm -hmm. uh but when it comes to that idea uh sarah what do you think yeah i mean i take the rumors with like a grain of salt i don't really have any expectations like i, I think it could happen uh but i think it also could not happen but that's pretty much all i have to say about it because i have no idea <laughs> right right no i definitely i definitely feel that all right what do you think dean yeah um i i kind of don't have like a a stand in any camp on this disney plus stuff i just think you know if they're making it it's totally possible because they're more open with kingdom hearts than they've ever been ever swords and smash right now so i mean they, they're definitely open to making Kingdom Hearts a bigger thing. All I want to say is, like, if it's real, I kind of hope it's more of, like, a, a cute Disney show rather than, like, heavy, heavy Kingdom Hearts lore. Just because I feel like from a marketing perspective, the new viewers from Disney Plus probably would come in. And if it was, like, really deeply Kingdom Hearts stuff, we would love it. But people would be like, you know, I came here to see... Moana talk to Donald and you know there's I don't know what's going on like if it was something right. like back cover but a Disney plus show I think it would do horrible so I think that's their chance to really capitalize on the Disney and uh, that could be their outlet for that I definitely get it I definitely get it all right so uh moving on with the questions we're gonna get two more and uh we got one from Sunny Firestorm stating 
would you guys like to see a Days remake and or a Coded HD if Hand made it sometime in the future? For me, listen, I would love a Days remake. You already know Days is one of my favorite Kingdom Hearts games ever. I would love a Days remake, but I am not... Uh, how do I want to say it? I'm not out there, you know, pushing for it. You know, because I I can still play it on the 3DS. I'm still fine. I would rather them focus on the future of Kingdom Hearts rather than go back and remake games that people believed de um, deserve the second chance. When people say like, oh, what about Kingdom Hearts 1 remake and the Kingdom shit? I'm like, we don't need that. Kingdom Hearts 1 holds up exceptionally well for like games during that time. So mm -hmm. I'm good when it comes to that avenue. Uh, what about you, sir? Yeah, I agree. I, I obviously, I think it would be really cool. I wish that they would have at least made it playable, to be honest, because I think, I don't know, I think that would have been nice. But I don't think that that's going to be a priority for them at all, because I just feel like that's too niche, and eh, I don't know. I would like it, but I don't, I don't think it's going to happen, at least anytime right. soon. Because yeah, like I could see them like remaking all of the games like in the like very, very far further future. Like when things really are like more outdated, but everything still holds up and it would be cool, but I just don't think, yeah. Oh God. That, that just got me thinking like what happens when they do the Kingdom Hearts 30th anniversary and they announce <laughs> Kingdom Hearts remake, you know, it's just the the Final Fantasy VII remake, what they did to give it the King, you know, Kingdom Hearts treatment and such, but oh my goodness. <sighs> I, I don't know. I'm not a, 10 years from now though. That's what I'm talking 10 years when, uh, the old games probably look i don't know what game's gonna we'll probably all be underwater who knows what's gonna happen in 10 years, <laughs> truly. so we'll see i for one would uh i would like a days remake because i hate that game and i would like to like it you know that's just the truth i would you're really wrong. Like to like it. you're wrong you're I, wrong i don't care your game is ass. <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong you're so, wrong so i just i want to like the game but hey and then I, I I was I imagined it on the Switch multiplayer. Thing. I'm sorry, Sky, your timer is over. We're gonna have to move on into Dean's. Days <laughs> <laughs> is still the worst game. Yeah, okay, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Days remake. I mean, I feel like it would be a lot more possible if Days was like a major player in the story of the future of Kingdom Hearts, but it's kind of more tied to the Xehanort saga, which is just wrapping up over and done now. So I realistically don't see them going for that for any reason. Now, I would love to see it just because I think Days has a lot of hidden gold in it that, uh, you know, HMK even talked about it earlier on the stream. There's a lot of good stuff in Days that they didn't really show off in 1.5. And some of that would even come with even just being able to play through the game. Like I remember Nomura said in an interview, for 1.5 to make days playable, they would have had to delay 1.5 by nine months. I kind of wish they did because uh, it came out on PS3 first and it had to be moved to PS4 like two years later. So yeah. if they just waited and did it on PS4 in the first place, we probably would have had a remake. But yeah, I guess it's just I don't think it's that important to them now. Nine but months. I would love to see oh it. Oh my right. God. That's not even that. I feel like, I don't know, in game development time, it doesn't seem that long. I don't know. Right? And he said nine months. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Now, uh, that's a now, baby. <laughs> it is. Ooh, it is. A walking. No? Babies no, walk at just, like one, two. Yeah, right? Yeah, I don't, yeah. Why do I keep thinking that babies can walk at nine months? I don't know. Um, babies are in the stomach. <laughs> they, just, they just came up. No, I mean, out of the stomach at nine months. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, the final question that we have here comes from One Sky, uh, One Sky, One Destiny, in which is a very simple one. What is your favorite Keyblade? We're gonna start off with uh, Sarah Key. You know, <laughs> what's your favorite Keyblade? Oh, but I'm so boring. It, no, you, stop. You can't, it's like Sarah, it's Sarah, Sarah. Can I, can I, I, that's and that's completely valid. It's a cool design, and I gotta say. You said you were saying that multiple times in the stream. Listen, as your <laughs> friend, stop it, all right? <laughs> you're not. You're, it's like, oh, uh, this is it's, it's boring. No, this answer is like, no, no. <laughs> Everything you say is amazing, all right? So oh, Kingdom thanks. Key, it is Kingdom Key. <laughs> it amazing, is Kingdom awesome Key. Place. I have a couple other runner-ups, but oh, I like if Kingdom you want to share. 
I like Oathkeeper. I like Oblivion. I like Ultima. Um, yeah, <laughs> those are probably my favorites. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad you shared that. That's you know, not kid, like it's not to be ashamed. Like Kingdom Key, look at the. I, I, it's I just have, iconic. I have four Kingdom Keys in my room. I have four. Like that one, that one, and there's two more over there on the on the <laughs> earth wall. I have four versions of the Kingdom Key in my room. So don't say they like, oh, it's boring. <laughs> not not, it's amazing. All right. Dean, what do you think? Yeah, I I almost want to say Kingdom Key. I feel like it deserves like that honorable mention, like its own category. Even if it's not my favorite, it's like it's the keyblade. It's it will always be the keyblade to me. I don't care what anyone says. But um right. my favorite, I suppose. I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 Ultima. I like the color blue a lot, and that's the blue one. I think all the Ultima weapons look really amazing, and I love getting them every time. But Kingdom Hearts 2 Ultima, special place in my heart. I feel very cool wielding it, and uh, it's very cool. Nice. Nice. Yo, I, I feel like the Ultima weapons always have really good designs. I've not I've yet to see an Ultima weapon that I'm like, that looks kind of kind of funky mm -hmm. or whatever but uh i was really scared that ultima i really want to see what the ultima design was in kingdom Hearts 3 and you guys already know me red as soon as i saw it, i'm like yo it's time that's it that's that's the ultima i'm sorry dean kingdom Hearts 2 move on over kingdom Hearts 3 ultima that's kingdom Hearts 4 will be pink I, i'll be down for that i'll be down i'll, I'll be so down. Have so i'm many just kidding videos. i don't think it will be good luck with that <laughs> um, especially like dream job keyblade's colorful yeah, but I mean, like, considering the energy that the name of Star Wars Unleashed in the Venom Rex trailer, and if she's going to be, like, a really big deal in Kingdom Hearts 4, you know, that could be the color for, Ver for the ultimate weapon in that. Like, yeah, I'm down for that. All right, uh, Sky, favorite Keyblade, let's get it. Um, Just the Kingdom Key D. I just love it. I love it conceptually. I love that it's, like, Mickey's Keyblade for the first, like, half of the series. I just, it's so cool. I like how it's, like, inverted colors of the, the base Kingdom Key. Right? Like, how it's from the Realm of Darkness and the kind of reflect each other i think that's so cool and like and then, sora is basically a reflection of mickey and i think that's just so and it, instead of so. having the the blue handle guard it has the red handle guard in the mm. middle like oh that that's a nice touch that's like oh that's nice uh but when it comes to me you know my favorite keyblades throughout the series and like I've, I've had keyblades like oblivion oath keeper and stuff like that. i'm always into like you know darkness and light type stuff but my favorite keyblade has been and has yet to be like you know surpassed is to become one you know serendipitous duo the roxas keyblade that is like one of the more sword looking keyblades the nobody keyblade nice and then of course the ability is uh not too bad you can really you know get final form a lot easier with that keyblade uh but i love that keyblade the effects everything about it is so cool especially that the charm is the roxas charm it's super super dope now uh when it comes to this stream i hope you guys have had a really good time as we wind to a close i have one final question to ask everyone here in the chat when it comes to the 20th anniversary either the event or the anniversary itself on the 28th does anyone here want to share upcoming plans of how you would like to celebrate with your communities for the upcoming 20th anniversary how about let's start with uh Saraki. do you have anything planned for the uh 20th anniversary or um, beyond? Yeah, I mean, I have a couple of things planned, but um, if you, if you I don't thought about share it too much, that's completely fine. I mean, I don't mind. Yeah. I thought about maybe doing a video where I react to my old Kingdom Hearts content. <laughs> I thought that might be kind of funny. <laughs> you are stronger than I. I don't even. It, I never want to go back. <laughs> do it. It'll be hard. I, I, no, do it. I, I, I'll be the first one. Like, subscribe. I mean, I'm already, I'm already subscribed, but like, like, comment. I'll comment five times to get that algorithm going. Let's go. Come on. Please. Yeah, and then I just want to... I've been working on maybe trying to platinum the other games. Because I platinum one, two, and three, but I avoided the others. So I'm going to try to fair. start doing that. Yeah. Nice. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, now, what about you, Dean? Yeah, so... For me, I'm, I'm in kind of a weird spot because my life is kind of moving in different directions right now. I have a lot of stuff going on. I haven't even really been able to do streams or videos lately, which I really, really want to do soon. But I haven't been able to do much. So in terms of the anniversary, I'm not sure of anything specific I'm going to be doing at the time. But I'm really looking forward to it, especially because kind of for me after Remind, 
I felt very, uh, very satiated with Kingdom Hearts. Like, I felt like I got what I wanted. I'm super happy and I can just chill. And I, I'm like, I'm used to after Kingdom Hearts 2, you know, they take a little while before and, you know, releasing the next games and stuff. So what I'm really hoping is to see something at that event and just let it like spark something in me. Like I need to know the future of Kingdom Hearts. I, I'm looking forward to being set ablaze, if you will. No, but, that's yeah. good. That's completely fair. And I'm looking forward to like, uh, we all be set ablaze, but you the most, because I'm like, yo, I want to see what Dean Let's go. <laughs> Let's get it. So yeah. I'm really excited and hopeful for the event. Now, when it comes to Skyward Wing, I hope you don't change your name again before the event. I'll try my best. <laughs> um, I don't really, I don't know. Dude, I kind of just post on TikTok now, really. So if there's anything fun on there, like the, during the anniversary, there's so many games coming out recently that um, the anniversary is going to be a thing that I'm going to keep an eye on. But it's not going to dedicate too much of my time. Because like right now, Elden Ring, and then there's Kirby that just came out. It's a bajillion things. So I'm more excited about the community aspect of it. Like everyone's going to be super excited and predicting. And like everyone's going to be like that feeling i miss that that is the kingdom hearts community to me is the are we gonna be so excited or are we gonna complain and i love yeah. that it could go on <laughs> each way it's great oh it's my great I, I love it i love it it's great no so I, I, that, that, I, I, i'm excited for that we haven't had one of those like what's about to be shown off in a minute so no, april 10th is gonna be like high hour and i'm super excited now as for me you guys already know uh that you know dean Help me bring the rabbit out of the hat. I have the 20th anniversary Kingdom Hearts Top 10. Uh, top 20 characters coming out on that day, hopefully. Then I also have an idea for a stream that I'm going to have uh, throughout all of Monday, possibly even 12 hours when it comes to, you know, going through all the Kingdom Hearts games, talking about them, having a good time with my viewers, my community, whatnot. And then you guys already know that when it comes to April 10th, I'm going to have a big stream starting at possibly 11 or midnight going into 6 a.m. when it comes to Japan time of the 20th anniversary event and hopefully getting some good answers and whatnot and i do have some surprises in store for you guys when it comes to the new release of hmk's um website and shop so i hope you guys look forward to that uh but when it comes to this key keepers fifth dimension stream we have to bring it to a close today and it's been such a great time thank you all so much for being here and thank you so much to all the people here in my stream and i can say this honestly from the ball of my heart you know the people here like sarah sky dean everyone here i love them with all my heart right and i'm so I glad that too, they're King. all here that they're here you know with me and ex you know exploring these avenues of kingdom hearts so thank you all so much for being here before i toss out to the wind i'm gonna throw the ball over to sarah dean then sky and they'll let you know if you don't know where you can find them let's begin with sarah okay hi i'm sarah key i uh, formerly known as keyblade sarah um <laughs> and i am sarah key both on twitch and youtube and yeah <laughs> i stream like variety <laughs> and stuff but obviously kingdom hearts is my favorite game yeah all right so uh <laughs> thanks for having okay. me oh of course of course <laughs> You know, uh, be sure to find an amazing content creator. You won't be disappointed. Trust me. All right, let's I'll get over to Dean. Where can they find you? Yeah, uh, my name is Dean, and my channel is called Sora Alarm One. It's uh, on YouTube, Twitch, and you know, even the same on Twitter. You can find me on all three of those platforms most frequently. And uh, yeah, I'm sure if you uh, ever looked up help on kingdom hearts you've probably stumbled upon one of my videos <laughs> once or twice yeah boss buster <laughs> oh man you already know but thank you so much for being here dean i can't wait to see what you got in store for the future when it comes to phase two of bianca's Ugh, i can't get enough of your content i kind of i kind of need my fix like now <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's true. Dean 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 has that like power. Like I don't know what he he seasons in his <laughs> Dean, content. He'll be like, oh, what the fuck? What the machine. That? You already know. <laughs> All right. All right. Last but not least, let's get the antithesis, the anti form of Landward Finn Skyward Wing. Oh wow. <laughs> I um 
you could catch me on Twitch. I'm currently streaming like Bug Fables and I'm playing Melody of Memory again, uh, going through this you know game again, rating all the tracks and feeling it out. Uh, I also put TikToks out, which has been super fun because like that platform is basically the Wild West and you could do whatever you want and it's hilarious all at once. So if you have a TikTok, peep me at Skyward Wayne. Check me out. But yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome, awesome! I can't wait to see more of those. Cause I, you know, you know, me and Ella have been watching those TikToks like left and right and stuff, and like we've been sharing them on Instagram and stuff. And it's like, yo, check mm -hmm. these out! Like, oh, it's super, super good. So, and of course, I am your host and leader of the Fifth Dimension, HMK. You can find me all things HM Killer, and I hope you guys had a really good hype time with these amazing Kingdom Hearts content creators, the Key Keepers, and your boy. Now, before I toss out to the wind, let's go ahead and raid another member of the Fifth Dimension, which is a Twitch team that I run. We're going to go ahead and raid Jashish, who is currently streaming right now. We're going to go ahead and show them our love, and I hope you had an amazing time. So, until the Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary, the Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary event, and beyond when it comes to Phase 2 and more, this has been HMK, Sarah Key, Sora Alarm 1, Escarred Wing, and we will check you guys later. Bye.